the bench with a bunch of quick tidbits and teardowns. First one would be a cheapest power supply marked by Sejam, a telecommunications company. It's damaged and uh, let's see what we've got here. Looking for a spudger because spudger is gonna spudge. And putting it somewhere. Crack it open, crack it open. Please, 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 crack it open. Yeah, it's coming apart, it's coming apart. Spudge is gonna spudge. And yeah, it's cracked open. And look at uh, what we've got here. Wow. This bird looks like shit. It officially looks like shit. See all the corrosion and the hits in here? And yeah, a bulging capacitor here. That, look, that looks real bad. All kinds of dirt and, uh, and other nasty stuff and... Cut joints on the board uh, below. Definitely a cold joint. And uh, and yeah, if you if you look closer, if you look closer, uh, you'll notice that uh, there are, there are wires that were cut off uh, from the board. It's absolutely horrible. The blue and the, and the brown one. It's absolutely horrible. Ugh. And and here as well. See. Just just who the fuck does electronics this way? Shit. Absolute garbage. It's absolute garbage. <sighs> Anyway, I'll be reusing the DC cable because uh, those kinds of plugs, it's uh, five and a half um, slash two and a half. It's not uh, five and a half slash uh, two point one. It will come in handy and the power supply goes to trash. And, and okay. Another one that I'm gonna rant about uh, is uh, is uh, is this cable. Uh, I cut off the other connector, but uh, start start by looking at those XLR connectors. It's branded rock cable, like some cheapest knockoff of Nitrix, but not even close. Yeah, the internals uh, look kind of like, uh, like Neutrik. Then the cable itself looks theoretically pretty nice. I might keep the connector as a spare or for experimenting. But uh, what's uh, more important, what I want to show you about this cable, it's just uh, how horrible uh, it looks on the inside because I, I saw it before. And uh, that's, uh, that's the thing I'm going to share with you now. Let's take apart the insulation. And... Uh, just look at this. Just look at this. Then the shielding covers only half of the of the leads, and uh, it it's just uh, it's just no shielding at all. 
Just who makes cables this way? Skimping on copper. Because uh, this is damn skimping. At least uh, I think it is copper, but uh, you can never be sure. Doesn't stick, it's not CCS. But it can still be CCI. But yeah, ultimate rubbish. I'm fed up. And uh, while we are here at the audio connections, uh, let me show you a few finds uh, that I've got around my lab. Uh, it's the jack connectors. That uh, there are a few good ones and uh, a few crappy ones. Uh, Start with the vintage ones, uh, take them apart. Uh, if you look here, you'll notice uh, a little brass bolt. Uh, this connector is, uh, is made uh, really solid and uh, I like those. Uh, they, uh, the metal quality is uh, far from flimsy. It's pretty solid, even though there is no manufacturer marking. Oh, I can see it. I can see the teeny tiny manufacturer marking on the on the end. Not sure if I can show it to you, but uh, but uh, this is the real deal vintage uh, jack connector from Unitra, made in Poland. 1970s or 80s the real deal vintage stuff I like that a lot next one would be something that I salvaged uh, from uh, a um, medical university's hospital because they had uh, a lot of uh, surplus gear and uh, it was uh, all out for the taking not exactly sure about the manufacturer of those uh, connectors, but they those are TRS connectors uh, with the with the ring contact. And uh, oh, this is uh, Switchcraft from Chicago. The good American stuff, good vintage American stuff, just like I like it. And uh, and those, uh, they look very solid, uh, even though they are not uh, screwed together, but, uh, but they are riveted connectors. Uh, I don't really like the riveted uh, connectors because uh, they might uh, come apart pretty quickly and lose contact. But still, damn good thing! Next three will be the connectors from Neutrik and uh, Rayan. Rayan is uh, an, an a, seems to be cheaper brand of uh, of Neutrik. Uh, let's compare the quality between uh, Neutrik and Rayan. On the outside, they appear the same. Those are also uh, TRS connectors, and uh, the rayon connector has uh, a plastic uh, inset here. If you if you take a closer look, uh, the left one would be rayon, and uh, the right one would be nitric. Nitric has a uh, phenolic uh, insulation element. Uh, which is uh, far better when it comes to um, thermal uh, stability and uh, and uh, ability to withstand uh, soldering. Let's uh, take the other nitric apart, and uh, it also has the phenolic uh, inset here. So. 
that would be a good uh, comparison between the um, Nitec and Rayon. Another one would be some no-name connector that uh, I had laying around and uh, it looks uh, it looks really crappy with uh, with the plastic inset here and uh, pretty small tabs uh, for soldering but uh, yeah it can it can s serve some uh, experimental purposes in my lab uh, like uh, for some uh, quick and dirty connections but I definitely wouldn't want to use it uh, in a studio setting. And uh, last, uh, those would be an uh, absolute garbage connectors, the cheapest ones that you can get while having the metal enclosure. And uh, yeah, they are pretty similar to, to this one. Only that uh, I think the metal quality and uh, tendency to to get uh, rusted is uh, is worse on those and uh, and the tabs uh, they are really flimsy and uh, not the thing that I like at all. So that would be it um, as for the connectors and uh, also I've, I bought uh, a pair of uh, ferrite core transformers and I'd like to see if uh, they would be any good for audio frequency applications because uh, I uh, talked with uh, with a good uh, old colleague of mine uh, back in Łódź, uh, Wiktor Skrzydłowski, the engineer. He makes uh, ferrite core audio transformers uh, and the pot type core and uh, and by filler want uh, wire. And he has uh, excellent results. Uh, those transformers of his uh, go from a few hertz uh, up to tens of kilohertz. Damn good. And uh, and the the core is uh, very hard to saturate. And I'd like to see because I bought a transformer that has a split. Yeah, I uh, <coughs> split spool here. I bought a transformer with a split spool. I'd like to see if I can uh, use them for anything audio related and uh, and uh, what uh, frequency re response I got from this little thing. That would be pretty interesting experiment. Uh, right now I'll be soldering a connector for the generator and uh, and then I'll, I'll hook it up to a scope. Now, where's the solder? I might as well connect a uh, trim pot uh, on the receiving end so that I can uh, change the load resistance and see where it takes us. Might as well use the salvaged conductor from the from the shitty cable. Reusing stuff is all the thing uh, here at Caritech.
Don't do that way. Yeah, let's uh, apply some load to this transformer because uh, we're not gonna test it and load it. I'd like to see what happens if I use it with something like um, 600 ohms and uh, what happens if I use it with uh, something more like uh, 5 kilos? I'm going for an uh, for a typical balanced uh, audio uh, application with uh, 600 Turning off the test equipment now. BNC to RCA adapter. Turn down the generator. Turn up the load as far as I can. The load now is uh, 4K7. And let's see what's going on with this one. I put, I'm putting out uh, 3 volts uh, for the transformer, it's a pity that you can't see it, but I'm, uh, I'm putting the 3 volts uh, across the transformer. Zero point one uh, volts per division uh, sine wave, and I've got uh, eight divisions that would make the eight volts peak to peak. No, zero point uh, eight volts. Of course, uh, using the. 1 to 10 division on the scope probe so that would be like uh, 8 volts peak to peak which means 4 volts uh, amplitude and let me do the quick calculation Of 
4 times uh, 0 0.707 is 2.828. That would be pretty much it. Anyway, let's uh, measure the AC voltage with the meter. I really should uh, use the V640 meter for that. Uh, seems much uh, more reliable. 2.735 and uh, this is the measurement I've got at uh, 1 kilohertz. Uh, let's go down and, uh, and see where it takes us uh, if we see the low frequency response on this one. Oh ho ho! Okay, I'm down at uh, at twenty four hertz, and uh, and the crossover distortion is starting, but uh, not really that much. It's still uh, pretty much a sine wave, and uh, now let's go up to the kilohertz range and uh, and see. I've got some. Uh, I've got some loss uh, on on the signal level. I'm now at uh, at five kilohertz, and it's it's starting to fall down. Not a good thing. I've got a significant loss uh, in the multiple kilohertz range. Yeah, so looks like this uh, this transformer. I'm not talking about the the pot core ferrite uh, transformers in general, but uh, this transformer doesn't really want to go up uh, in the full audio frequency band, uh, and. Uh, even though it uh, it has uh, quite good uh, frequency response um, on the lower end, uh, it doesn't go up, and uh, it might be the case that um, the car is uh, put together with a with an uh, air gap. Or something like that. Uh, let's take it apart and see how it's uh, how it looks on the inside. No, it appears that uh, that there is uh, no air gap in uh, in this transformer.
so it's not the case that it may have to be bike filler want um, to get a better frequency response and I might uh, experiment with it uh, a bit because uh, I've got a lot of uh, HF uh, lit wire that I could uh, use for by filler winding the transformer and uh, that should uh, reduce the stray inductance in in the transfer MR. I don't have uh, that much of uh, knowledge when it comes to transformer construction Just uh, having some uh, some suspicions and testing them by experimenting. So the bandwidth from this one is pretty crappy and uh, without modifications uh, I can't use it. It's a pity. And uh, that would be it for now, for those little tidbits and teardowns here at the bench.